2011 Volvo C30 T5 R design. I'm old and I'm done racing. I'm done being cool. Let's take three ibuprofens and cuddle. This is the rarest version of a car you will see in a long time. This is a comfy, luxury car that curves like a scalpel. This is a tiny hot hatch that is comfortable and quiet. This is a performance car that remains small but doesn't hurt your back. This is Scott Atkins. He can act, he can steal the scene, he can fight, and he can dance. Today's episode of Regular Cars is sponsored by Groove Life. Ooh. With its durable, high-quality aluminum outer shell, this wallet is unlike any wallet I've seen. And whatever happens to your Groove Life gear, they are here to help. With Groove Life's 94-year, I just said 94-year, no BS warranty. The Groove Life wallet is the last wallet you'll ever need. All your cards and ID go in here and they don't fall out. I'm not using my credit card, I'm just using my AAA card. Here comes the flip test. Plus, they just launched a new attachment, the Groove Life Wallet Go. A perfect low profile companion to your Groove Life Wallet or iPhone 12, 13, or 14. It uses innovative micro suction technology to give you the ability to add another three cards plus cash. Say goodbye to this. Say hello to this. This wallet is so slim, you can easily fit it in your front pocket, and you'll barely know it's there. Go to GrooveLife.com slash regular. See all their products they have there, including this fantastic wallet. Once again, that is GrooveLife.com slash regular. Go there and check it out. Click on the link in the description. The C30 T5R design is one of the few hot hatches that wraps you in a big hug like... Toriel. Okay, accelerating up a hill. What do you got for me? Awesome. Yeah, that, okay, it's weird. Yeah, pull strong. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking shift him like a Ford and don't. And up. That got hot. All right, are we gonna need first for this hill? Or is turbo gonna, mm. All right, it's the second hill, nothing yet. Okay, 2,500, 3,000, three, turbo comes on at three. Nice. We may just keep it in second right here. Yeah, it is not ragged. You will wait a little bit for, ooh, that's good. That's good. Here's where it's good. Okay. Turbo 3-4, even better. You can get in a race with someone and not look like you're racing someone. Yeah. It's just, this is really nice. Haven't left second yet. There's way more confidence. Oh, yeah. And everything, everything's mature. It's not going to overwhelm you with... I wonder if it just limited boost in first, because it felt like it was pulling better in second than first. I wonder if it's boost by gear here. Or maybe traction control on these older roads. It thought, mm, I know what you're trying to do, but no. Yeah. Which, knowing Volvo. Mm -hmm. People with RS, but I have 300, which means I'm better. It's like, oh well, yeah, you're, you're faster. But can you man maintain that? Now that was that rattling. Uh, that was something. That Let's try that first gear. Yep, that is definitely boost by gear. That was full throttle, and it felt naturally aspirated. Okay. But second gear, yeah. There, there's a guy. It's it's doing something. Oh, 
oh, this is a composite, so your radio and HVAC are in the same. Yes, sir. Oh, that sucks. That means you're stuck with a little, do you have an aux cable in here? Is there an aux jack? Uh, there is an aux jack. It's in here. In okay. The lower. Well, that means you're buying a, an Amazon little broadcaster for it, and that's how you're listening to your music. Or do you still just listen to CDs in this thing? Uh, I've got oh, fresh oil and chips. I don't want to. I've got a Kaya CD in here. It's like if I like driving with the windows down, but if you have like B and E and B and E in with Jordan on it, it's just yeah. like. And I was sucking a dick. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine the luck dragon from Neverending Story, but they want to spoon with you. Imagine friendship and romance meeting on a level playing field. Imagine all those short form content videos of tame cheetahs and you just want to stick your face in their stomach hob style and go now, why would you have the R design when you could just have a John Cooper Works Mini? Well, because, ow, my lower back. Ow, ow, ow. Dude, seriously. I have to do this thing now in real life where I hang off the pull-up bar at the gym. And just hang on it. Hang on the pull-up bar like for 30 seconds just to decompress my spine a little bit before my workout. Ever get a blowjob from a mouthful of Altoids? Ever get a blowjob from a mouthful of Swedish fish? Ever get a blowjob from a mouthful of Burger Buddies? The Volvo C30R design was, in a way, Ford's soft launch of a version of the Focus RS in the United States. This, of course, is from the era where Ford and Volvo were simpatico. It's not really a Eurospec RS wearing a waspy Exton, Pennsylvania outfit. This is more of a, hey, American buyers, maybe you want something different. Maybe you want a turbo boost that feels like an edging orgasm. Something you can wait for until Volvo shoves something with lithium batteries and a USB-C port all the way up and against your prostate. Oh, I'm about to bust. Time to put on my driving gloves. Time to feel the textured surface of my center console and play with my cube. Time to enjoy bilateral symmetry. The sound, the sound, the tuning sound. Give me that low turbo. Give me that long turbo. Give me that slow delayed gratification. I'm gonna wait until after the keynote speech to touch my pee pee under my graduation gown. The Volvo C30 is a car that only lasted for a single generation from 2006 to 2013. But while it was here, the C30 made the case for Volvo joining a long, long list of products and experiences that are always overlooked. Like a new toothbrush for the first time, or going to the movies by yourself. The T5 represents the legacy of the turbocharged, transverse-mounted five-cylinder that dates back to 1994, when it made its debut in the Volvo 850 Turbo. Running on the Volvo P1 platform, the C30 evolved from the Volvo Safety Concept Car, an experimental safety vehicle that would have stuff that means almost nothing to people now, but would have been state-of-the-art in 2001, like blind spot monitoring, lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control, and headlights that follow the road during curvature during curving, during turns, turn, turn into a new, turn into a new experience, come and knock on my door, 
<laughs> I'm waiting for you. We'll have a nice time. I don't use bed sheets anymore. You know, I thrash around too much in bed, so we can just... Well, I, I just like the duvet cover, and we can just be under the duvet cover together. Don't mind my feet. They just kind of do their own thing. This car went through a bunch of different prototypes before Volvo decided on making a variation of the S40 V50 C70 lineup. And after all that build, you get a six-speed manual with a clutch as light as a Honda Fit. Do you like your back scratched? I can scratch your back. I can do this thing with the emery boards and make my my, my fingers kind of, fingernails kind of, kind of, kind of sharp, but I'll only go light. Light like the, uh, like the clutch in the Honda Fit. Just, do you like back scratch? I'll stay on your spine. I, I, it's going to be fine. It's a car that pulls in third and fourth, but still lets you putter around in sixth. For all the comfortable cruising that this car is good for, do you really need 227 horses just to pick up a stack of 24 packs of Mountain Dew from Sam's Club? Probably not. But you do get 21 city and 30 highway. You get heated seats. You get more passenger room than you would think from, you know, just looking at this tiny car in hell. You even get a waterfall center console letting you know about the sound, the tuning sound. Tune into my wavelength and then we can, you know, meet on a level playing field where friendship and romance gets known. You'll find me quite pleasing in the same way as finding an onion ring hiding in your order of fries. This is basically a Ford Focus that shops at Ikea. Right down to the headlight assembly that pops out. I didn't believe it when he said you could just pull the headlight assemblies out with no tools. Look how easy that is to change light bulbs. But even with the Ford similarities, this still feels very European. Like the cup holder that gets in the way of the shifter, so if you're drinking an American-sized beverage, you're probably going to have a bad time. You can have a good time with me. It'll be nice and relaxing, and we can spoon late into the morning. We can even set our alarm clock just so we can turn it off again. I don't sweat in my sleep, so you're not going to, you know, get wet or get moist. I mean, it's it's not going to be like you're... Uh, you don't got to stay vigilant like the sunroof in a C30 because uh, the sunroofs, uh, they're going to leak. I don't think it's a pre as prevalent an issue as the Targa tops on the Honda Del Sol, but if leakage pipes erode and water gets into the electronics, you're going to be dealing with a bill that you wouldn't be able to justify paying for a Volvo. How do you play hype man for a Volvo? especially to young people. This is like being Danny DeVito's wingman. No matter how good it is, it's still an uphill battle. They used this car in the movie Twilight because Volvo didn't make the S60R anymore. And what better car for a 100-year-old vampire pretending to be a teenager in the 2010s? You know what kids like? They like an MSRP of $27,000 and the threat of people assuming you wear jorts. Yeah, that's what kids like. Jesus. How do you solve a problem like Volvo? How do you make Scandinavian minimalism appeal to American sensibilities? It's simple. You don't. You embrace Volvo for what it is while recognizing you're going to look like a guy who has power of attorney over his elderly brother who doesn't work because he slipped and fell down a flight of stairs to the gift shop at Shady Maple and now he doesn't remember his birthday. You accept the identity while being comforted by the knowledge that your car is better than anyone would ever know just from looking at it. Forget about judging books by their cover. The Volvo C30 T5R design is an argument for not judging a book by its author. It's an outsider. But there's value in that. Every social circle has a smaller social circle within it that excludes certain members of the larger group. Concentric circles of hierarchical friendship meeting at the tuning set. Sure, people like Bob. People like Bob. But when someone plans a trip to Jamie's dad's cavern in the Poconos, guess who finds out about it a month after it happens? If he ever finds out at all. That's what Volvo is. 
The C30 doesn't give off the vibes of someone you'd want to have around because you probably won't think of Volvo when mulling over options for your next hot hatch. Volvos don't have a reputation for being fast or fun or aesthetically pleasing unless, you know, we're buying a Volvo 240. But any good social group has variety, a healthy spread of different personality types for balance. A Volvo is the palate cleanser of the group, the pickled ginger, cutting through the overwhelming flavors represented by the rest of the squad. What the Volvo lacks in flamboyance, it recovers in consistency. Because Volvo has been Volvo forever, Volvo will be Volvo forever. You can't even call Volvo a necessary evil because they don't aspire to the types of zests required for evil. They're just a fact of the automotive world. There's nothing wrong with the Volvo C30 T5R design except for its marketing. Because Volvo aimed this at a younger demographic. While the only thing someone below the national drinking age is ever going to see when they look at this car is their dad trying to use modern slang whenever they have friends over. The Volvo C30 is every dad who sees a neighbor washing their car and hits them with a, ah, ah, can you do mine next? <laughs> hey, 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 you missed the spot. <laughs> Dad joke. Hey, 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 I'm back. Line drawing of a macro wolf shoving a London double decker bus down his urethra. Where'd that come from? Volvo C30. The official car of every dad's rhetorical question How many times do I have to say it? You could always do worse than a Volvo C30. You could always drive a Jetta and look like someone whose equity is tied into his collection of gently used Funko Pops. But is Volvo a rational choice? More specifically, is the T5R design a rational choice for a car? I mean, what is rationality anyway? This car doesn't look great, but it's beautiful in its weirdness. It's an answer to a question no one asks. How can I have a luxury car and a hot hatch at the same time? It's one big jumble of jagged pieces until you start piecing it together, little by little. And then you start to realize, you look at the T5R design and you think, you know, I get it. I get it now. Rationality is tied to context. A person's opinion will always be informed by the context of their own circumstances. There's no objectivity here, just the subjective truth. Either a Volvo is or isn't for you, and within those concentric circles, either the T5R design is so you, or you look at it and, and you think, why has it got to be like that? As if being weird is a choice. But within the limited scope of what a Volvo is and what it can be, the T5R design is about as good as it gets. It's surprising, right? Because you'd think this, you'd think you'd start feeling the beginnings of wear and tear on this car since Ian purchased this at 146,000 miles and it's currently at 152,000 miles. But for being a car that's been credibly accused of copying Ford's homework, this is the superior option because it's Ford without the Ferd. It's a car that's shockingly good in a time where there aren't many cars left that I think we can say that about. Shockingly good. Most of what's out there are known quantities. So when you're taken off guard by a Volvo, of all things, it's hard not to gas it up. Because the world doesn't always allow for the good kind of surprises.